Good morning, Cardinal Ambrosic. Today is Thursday, January the 21st, 2021. And this morning we have a prayer intention. We pray for the repose of the soul of Graham T. Dornford, who died last week on January the 13th. We especially pray for Miss Dornford, as Graham is her uncle, as well as her family, as they cope with this very difficult loss. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. And please join me this morning as we do each and every morning with the sign of our faith. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving God, you have given all peoples one common origin. It is your will that we be gathered together as one family in yourself. Fill the hearts of humankind with the fire of your love and with the desire to ensure justice for all. By sharing the good things you give us, may we secure an equally, an equality for all of our brothers and sisters throughout the world. May there be an end to division and strife and war and injustice and any form of discrimination. May there be a dawning of a truly human society always built on both love and peace. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now please join me in the praying of the Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. St. Teresa of Avila, pray for us. And St. Patrick, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, good morning, Cardinal Ambrosic. And we continue again this morning uh, with our ongoing Indian Farmers Campaign. Uh, This morning, we will have a reflection and personal testimony from Sir Jan Carr. Sir Jan is a grade 10 student, and she will be providing to us an audio of her reflection. And I'm so proud of many of our grade 10 students. Uh, We have uh, quite a unique uh, core of group, a core uh, group of 10 uh, grade 10 students who um, have been uh, just absolutely awesome. I've been involved in many, many groups, uh, have been um, uh, very proactive in their initiative with many of the campaigns that we've already, uh, that have already taken place and that are continuing to take place. I know that there are many who will be joining in for Black History as well. So a shout out today to all of our great tens for the amazing work that you're doing uh, this year. So let us now hear from Sir Jan uh, Carr, again, a grade 10 student on the Indian Farmers Campaign. Ashes have continued between protesters and the government in India this week over new legislation. Farmers claim will threaten their livelihood, marking nearly five months of public outcry. These bills affect the largest single sector of the economy and the poorest people in an already developing country during a pandemic. To take away the social security net for people who are already on the edge of the brink of poverty is not just a matter of country, but that of basic human rights. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. It aches my heart as it would of any other seen humans to see people from the ages of 6 to that of 90 living their lives on roads away from their families in the harsh and cold months of winter. Their courage comes from a lineage of fighters that came before them. Each time one stands up and strikes against injustice, they send forth a ripple effect of hope. Perhaps I was privileged enough to get out in time. But my heart still bleeds for the suffering happening in my own hometown. My family and I continue to send financial aid for those fighting on the front line and are tremendously grateful for their fortitude. And thank you, Sir John. We're tremendously grateful uh, for you and for your presence and your words. And so let us continue to educate ourselves on the issue of the Indian farmers' injustice especially in our community, where we see a large number of students and families personally affected uh, by this injustice. Uh, Next week, we will conclude with two more reflections, and then the week of February the 8th, we will have a petition signing campaign. And again, more information and all details to that signing uh, campaign and how you can get involved uh, will be provided to you in the coming weeks. 
Just a couple of announcements this morning. Uh, today at 12.15 p.m., we have our final bereavement group meeting for our first session. Uh, all students who are participating, please be sure to be on time at 12.15 as this is our last meeting for this group. A new session will be established in the spring. Uh, both Ms. Jones and I will uh, provide further details for that. And again, as you uh, are aware or become aware of any students that have lost uh, a significant person in their life, please let us know and we will be sure to include them in our bereavement group. And tomorrow is Friday and we will continue with the Praying of the Divine Mercy Chaplet at 3 p.m. And again, all students and staff are welcome uh, to end your week uh, in prayer, asking for God's mercy, which he freely gives us, and uh, being able to do that in Thanksgiving at the end of our week. So tomorrow at Ambrosic Chaplaincy at 3 p.m., as we do each and every Friday, uh, please join us for the Praying of the Divine Mercy Chaplet. And that's it, Cardinal Ambrosic. Uh, I wanted to give a special shout out to Mr. Angaren this morning. Mr. Angaren, um, yeah, Juventus, we did it again. Super Copa champions of Italy. But anyways, just wanted to uh, give a little special shout out to uh, Mr. Angaren as he is so supportive of all of my sports teams and, and of our soccer rivalry. Cardinal Ambrosic, have a wonderful Thursday. God bless you. We will see you tomorrow.